Do you have a dog that likes to pull on leash? Pretty much everyone does. <laughs> Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and today we're going to be talking about how to get your dog to heal on leash properly. There's a couple things here. First and foremost, we have heard from lots of people. They have young puppies and they struggle with getting them to walk nicely on leash. There's a couple different ways to look at this. First and foremost, you need a dog to be able to walk by your side. That's one option. We call that healing. The other is to go on a loose leash walk. That's essentially going to be that the dog has the ability to kind of roam a little bit and sniff, but not be pulling on the lead. This is a bigger thought process. So what we like to start with is the actual healing portion, which is keeping the dog by your side. Now today, I have Hex with me, and we're going to be talking about this Standing Stone Easy Lead. This is a product we specifically designed to help stop pulling. Now, when you stop the actual pulling in the process, you're able to condition a dog that's not pulling. This is not a um, end all be all. This is a progressive training system that allows us to go from a dog that's pulling on leash to a dog that doesn't pull on leash to a dog that can walk completely loose leash or off leash healing beside you. In this beginning step here, we like to start by teaching everything. One of the most difficult parts of the healing process is a dog that's comfortable coming and getting to the healing position. Now, if you've been following along with the series at all, you've seen that we've already taught this, and that's kind of where we were starting with just a little warm up for the session. We've got our clicker, we've got some food here. This is his uh, Yukonuba breakfast, and we're just working on getting into the actual position in which we want him to heal and starting to take a few steps. I am luring him. I have food in my hand, but this allows us to keep focus as well as to develop this ability to get into a healing position and then walk a few paces with us. And then even without food, we can move into that just the same. That all looks really good, right? Now, on a leash, when there's more excitement, he's going to be a puller. He's standard, just like every other dog out there. But we've developed some of the understanding of where to be when we're actually talking about healing. Now, how this leash works, we're going to take here and do a little bit of fancy work that's gonna happen quickly, but I'll break down for you. We're gonna fold the handle of the leash. We're going to run it through the ring. That's going to make a standard style slip leash. The ring here on the back on the actual clip makes your ring like what a standard slip leash would do. We wanna keep that high and most importantly when you use this, this is a common mistake, it needs to slip off the outside, okay? It needs to slip off the outside because we want it to give. If you have it slipping off the inside, that would be, he's like, this is weird, we don't work on this side. If you have it slipping off the inside, it can actually bind. So get back over here where you're supposed to be. So slipping off the outside, key number one there. And then we're going to have that clip to his flat collar. And we're gonna make a figure eight underneath here. You can see I, I let out additional slack. We're gonna make a figure eight that goes up over his muzzle. Now what we've done is a makeshift head halter. This is an old horseman trick. If you just have a rope, you can make a halter really quickly. And what halters are designed to do is to help give you control over the dog's head. Um, with horses, you can help lead around a thousand pound animal. It applies really well to 100 or 50 pound animals as well. This is going to take a little bit of getting used to. Dogs are not overly comfortable with this in the beginning. Um, Hex is pretty low key and very mentally stable. So he doesn't get overly worked up about a lot, but we need to start with a little bit of pressure so that he can kind of feel what that's like and get used to it. And then once your dog seems to be fairly comfortable with that, then you can move into the next step. So step one with the easy lead is to stand still, get comfortable with just the small amounts of pressure. Now, as we work through this, we're going to be utilizing pressure means stop. No pressure means we can walk. 
So you have to pay very close attention to that. Dogs have what's called opposition reflex. Opposition reflex is going to be, they essentially feel things, pressures, resistances, and they resist against them, okay? They oppose them. If you have your dog and they're on lead and you can feel some tension start to build, or if you have them clipped to a harness and they feel that basically tension from the leash hitting, they try and pull against it. So it actually encourages pulling. If you have just clipped to their flat collar even, they start to feel that and some dogs will pull so much that they start to choke themselves with their flat collar. Not optimal, but it's something that's almost out of their control being that it is a reflex, okay? We're gonna think as we move through this process that we need this to be down just a little bit. This springy material, uh, I know some of you are thinking, well, can I just do this with a standard leash? The material that the Easy Lead is made out of is springy, and that gives it the ability to relax. So when we drop this hand, you can see a good amount of relax there. It doesn't fall off of his face, but it does release the pressure. That's important. If you have it set up wrong, it will bind and maintain pressure, which again, we just talked about, will work against us from that reflex standpoint. Something to constantly fight. We don't want that. Now, when I start the moving process, we wanna do it in baby steps. The smaller steps we take in dog training, the faster we're gonna get there. So we will do a little bit of sidestepping. I can just move into him and then stop. That I got him to move his feet without actually asking for movement because it's really easy to say, come with me, and then what are we doing? We're applying pressure here. That's what needs to stop, right? So we just sidestep here a little bit and then stop him. He can get used to that process of moving and stopping. What does the pressure mean? How do we deal with it? Again, just a few steps around and stop. Now. He's, again, very comfortable with this. You can even see a handful of little tail wags. He's relaxed, he's reserved, but he's dealing with it well. The next piece, we do a lot of luring, baiting type of activity with our hands. It gets food from our hands. So we can actually utilize that food or just encourage movement here. And then again, stop. This is simple, okay? so. Here's another mistake that we see people make on a regular basis. Whether they're trying to utilize the easy lead or they're just going for a walk with their standard leash, okay? The mistake that's made is people just slap the leash on or whatever the healing product may be. There's a lot of them on the market, but then go for a walk, okay? The end goal, and we talked about that in the beginning, the end goal is to be able to go for a walk. We can't start there. We have to start here. Do sessions in your house, do sessions in your garage, do sessions in your driveway, then take short trips up and down the sidewalk, then go for the longer walk. All of these are a progression through the process. Now, we're encouraging movement, so this is loose. You can see him give to it a little bit right there, right? He's kind of pulling on it, he's like, I don't know about this. So what we're gonna do is build a bigger reward I've got food right here. I'm gonna keep his focus and then again, stop. This is building comfort with the walking process. You get to eat that. I don't need to keep it from you. Good job. So around in a circle, he's now focused up here and stop. Good boy. There you go. Now we're gonna do one without the food in my hand. It's important to kind of mix that up. Hey, hey, hey. Good. Again, we have him walking. This is only a few steps. If your dog doesn't progress this quickly, it's fine. It's more about working through each individual step at your dog's pace. Step one being get used to the lead. Step two being these little bit of side movements, get used to the leash. Then we move into the next step of walking forward, either with food or without. Hey, <laughs> we don't want you focusing on that. We want you focusing here. You can see I've got a little bit of slack in the lead. And then when we stop, light pressure up, and so that you're understanding, this is very, very, very little pressure. And using basically two fingers here to control this leash, we don't want hard, sharp pops, and we don't want long, steady pulls. It needs to just be light, tap, 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 as a, hey, focus, you need to stop. <whistles> Let's keep moving here, good job. Right there, good. We'll turn this way. Good job, bud. Come on. Good. 
keeping focus here, making turns now, making huge progress with this guy. And stop. We'll do a brief here, but this is an awesome tool to be able to help stop pulling, okay? Now, once we have a really good understanding of the easy leak, that is going to slip right off of his nose and we're gonna go back to what I showed you before. That's a slip style lead and we'll move into collar conditioning to heal. That will be the process that ultimately allows us to be completely off leash as we're walking on lead and we can apply that to all aspects of life. Guys, I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Hex. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next video.